All right, well, I'm sitting here waiting on primer to dry, and I thought it'd be a good time to just kind of tell the story about how I got into this business, where it's been, where it's at, where it's going, because um, I've labeled the channel Bulletproof Handyman Business, and there's a lot of things that I think make it bulletproof and anti-fragile. So, most of my life I've worked on planes, avionics, installing communication systems, upgrading navigation systems, just troubleshooting and fixing shit, running wires, and I hate it. The Air Force had me do it when I was 18 and joined. It's a skill I learned. It's a good paycheck anywhere in the country, but I just hate working for other people. I can't stand it. So I had this friend who needed a new kitchen and she asked me to do her kitchen and I was already working like 20 hours a week of overtime on top of my regular shift. And I told her I didn't have time, I didn't have time, she kept asking and finally I just thought, well, shit, what would it take? How much money would I actually make? How long would it keep me employed? Because I wanted to become a full-time handyman. And it seemed like maybe this is a good step into that world. So I ran the numbers and I went to her and I said, okay, it's going to be about $10,000. And she said, that sounds pretty good. And I was like, okay, well, I need to know before I quit my job, because I don't have time to do this while working 20 hours a week overtime. So I need to know before I quit my job, are you serious? Do you have the money in the bank? right now and you're ready to go so that when I quit my job I show up at your house the next day and I put a kitchen in and she said yeah so this is just kind of the way I've always done life I just took the leap just took it turned in my two-week notice I figured well I've got two weeks before I start that kitchen and then it's gonna take me maybe two weeks and by the end of that two weeks, I better have some more work. So I did, and back then I was literally $25 an hour because I was stupid and because it was a friend. But the way I looked at it was, well, I'm making $25 an hour now at this job, roughly. So if I do this kitchen for $25 an hour, I'm employed for two weeks at the same rate. Of course, I didn't take into account the insurance and all of that, but my wife got all those benefits at her job and I just did it and while I was there I started sending out a lot of feelers and what ended up happening was this one girl called me I had a Craigslist ad and this girl calls me and she's like hey uh, I've got a it's a bedroom door and one of the hinges is off the tenant said that when they put the screw in the screw just spins and spins and spins and I'd seen this before because I've been doing this kind of work my whole life both on the side and professionally whenever I'm not doing planes. <laughs> so, um, you know, I said, yeah, that sounds like something I can do. I said, but you have to know I have an $80 trip fee. Now, I really didn't. The truth was I just had enough work lined up that I didn't need more work. So it was kind of my way of being like, well, it's a win-win. Either I don't have to do this job, or if I do this job, I'm getting paid $80 for a job that I know is going to take me five minutes. And I thought that was a lot. <clears throat> so she was just immediately was like, yeah, that sounds good. And I was like, wow. And then she said, do you mind that we're a property management company? Like, is that okay with you? And I had no clue about the property management world. But I was like, why would I care? you're a property management like I don't care who you are as long as I do the job and I get paid and she said well most handymen hate property management companies because you have to pay for the materials yourself and then invoice us and then we don't pay you for a couple weeks and I thought about it and I was like well shit it's not gonna take hardly any money in materials it's not gonna take five minutes if I have to wait two weeks for the 80 bucks then so be it so I took the job went out the very next day just five minutes in and out just plugged the hole with a little stick and then put the screw back in expanded the stick out you know everything sealed up just fine but then I started thinking and I was like man if she had more of these especially if they don't take a lot in materials I can charge way more for a property management company 
than what I charge my normal clients. And if I can charge more, then I make more. And if I make more, then I can use that more to put into materials so that I can do more jobs that I'm charging more money for. And I figured eventually, if I cycle that up far enough, I should reach a point where I've, I've just always got invoices out that are always rolling in, but where I'm charging way more. And I was just like, okay, well, let's give this a shot. So I told her to send me more work if she wanted, she did. I didn't have a lot of money, I couldn't take every job, because I didn't have that kind of money to put in the materials, because I mean, just one job might be like a kitchen faucet, it takes less than an hour to do, but it's $100 in materials, so eight hours a day. If you did eight kitchen faucets a day, you need $800 worth of materials a day, and then you do that for two weeks, five days a week, so now you got 10 days, that's $8,000 that you don't have. That's just an example, but the point being, I took on a few jobs, um, things were going well, but it wasn't a whole lot of work, and it did reach a point where I needed more work, and I thought, I wonder what the ceiling is for trip fees. So, you know, I told her that I had a minimum $80, that that was my trip fee. Um, and what I did was I got online, I found 10 more property management companies, and just basically emailed 10 companies, introduced myself, said, hey, my name is Ray, I do this for a living, I provide these services, uh, my minimum trip fee is $100. And I figured, you know, if 10 of them say no, well, I can go back down to $80 and I can send that to 10 more. I think there was 60 or 80 of them listed on Google. So out of the 10 emails I sent back, I got two responses. Both of them were excited. Both of them were like, that sounds great. We can't wait. We need another handyman really bad. Our last handyman just fell out of touch. And by the way, that seems to be how I get on with new property management companies is they have a handyman and he's a good handyman. They like him. They send him all the work. Uh, he's making money. They're getting houses taken care of. And then one day he just falls off the map. Like maybe he got a stimulus payment and he just didn't need to work for a month because I got a big old stimulus payment. So he just falls off the map, or maybe he went to jail, maybe he's on a bender, maybe he divorced his wife, I don't know, but handymen tend to not be reliable. So these two companies started sending me some work, and I was now at a $100 trip fee, and I was like, well shit, this is pretty nice, let's see what happens at 125 and I picked 10 more companies, sent out 10 more emails, this time I got one reply for the 125 and they weren't excited about the 125. They kind of asked some questions about what I would charge for different jobs, uh, but I stuck to my guns, and I just answered them real directly, like no emotion involved. And then, you know, they said, well, what about if it was just this kind of job? And I said, well, that'd be $125, that's my trip fee. Even if it only takes five minutes, that just is my trip fee. And I understand if you feel like that's too much, please feel free to send those tiny jobs to other people and to only send me the ones that you feel are worth 125 an hour. And that's what we did. But here's the thing, and this is the secret about property management companies. These are all investment properties. They're not paying you to fix a leaky kitchen sink drain. They're not paying you to make a hinge on a door work again. The reason that they're giving you their money is because there's a homeowner and that's an investment property and that homeowner, if he wants to make money on that investment property, he needs it to always be rented. He needs the tenants in there and it's way better for him if the tenants stay because when you do a move out, you end up painting, cleaning carpets, you hire me to do a thousand dollars worth of some other work and you spend all this money and maybe it doesn't get rented for a month or two. So now you've lost a month or two of rent. You've also spent a couple thousand dollars and your property manager themselves, they're getting a cut of that. And they want that property rented and they want happy tenants because when they have tenants calling them nonstop, complaining about issues that haven't been fixed, that takes time out of their day. And these guys, their goal, they want to have as many properties as they can possibly handle having while getting their percentage cut from every single property. 
So their goal is they want a guy like me where a tenant calls them and says, hey, my toilet won't stop running. Here's what's best for them. They sit down and they type or they send a text to me and the text has the address, it has the tenant's name and the tenant's contact info and a very brief description of what's wrong. Now, they send that to me. They don't even hear back from me. I don't text back and say, okay, I got it. I'm gonna get this fixed on Wednesday. They send me the text and then three days later, a week later, if it's busy time of year, maybe three weeks later, they just receive an invoice. And if it's not an invoice that a homeowner is gonna be super pissed about, they don't really care. I mean, yeah, if they have 10 handymen and two of them are insanely expensive and two of them are really cheap but also drunks, they're gonna go with someone in the middle. But the bottom line is the service you're providing is that you are allowing them to simply shoot off one text or one email and then suddenly get an invoice back. And they, you don't need to call them. They don't want you to show up at the job and say, hey, I uh, noticed that the sink is stainless steel and the faucet is stainless steel, but I was looking at Home Depot and they didn't have a stainless steel one that looks just like this, but they do have a brush nickel. Uh, they don't care, okay? These are rental properties. Um, most of them are not super nice ones. I work for a couple companies that have a lot of super nice ones, but I find that those tenants are so much pickier and they want to get involved in stuff. And what your goal is to get in and get out. Your goal is to show up with proper tools, proper parts, get the job done and get to the next job because you're charging a trip fees. You're not charging by the hour. So the faster you get this job done, the better. And they don't want you to call them. So don't call them unless you really need to get in there Pretend like this is your investment property and your goal is just simply that sink needs to stop leaking or that toilet needs to stop running or that stain on the ceiling needs some paint on it and you just get it done and you move on to your next job. And the secret with this is now I personally right now am at $125 trip fee. It seems to work for me. It's, it's the level where going above that, I tend to meet a little bit of resistance, but here's the other thing, is I've been doing this long enough for the companies I've done it for. It's not as if every job is 125. Sometimes they're 165, sometimes they're 350, sometimes they're 999. I do stay under the $1,000 mark uh, because here in Arizona, for some reason, they do stings to look for handymen who are doing jobs over a thousand dollars. I've literally received text messages that I'm pretty sure were part of a sting. It's just, you talk to enough homeowners who want you to do work. There's a certain way a homeowner approaches a handyman to do work. There's certain questions they ask, there's certain tones they take, and you can tell when they're different. You can tell when it's a guy whose job is to pretend to be a homeowner. So I keep them all under a thousand bucks. I just won't do it if it's over a thousand. It's not worth my time and I make more money if I do six small jobs at $125 each than if I do one medium sized job for $999. So that's where I'm at these days. And the trick to the whole thing is to understand that you're not a handyman exactly. That the product you're selling is not the fixing of an item. There's the homeowner themselves can fix a leaky toilet. They can get on YouTube and figure it out and the property management could probably pay them 50 bucks to do it. But what they need is to not have to sit on the phone, to sit on the computer, to answer a bunch of text messages, to hold your hand and walk you through it. They need a guy who they can go to a move out and the tenants just left and they walk in there and they have a notepad or they've got their phone open and they're typing stuff in and they're walking around and they're going smoke detectors beeping this outlet covers cracked the kitchen sink is dripping they'll send you a nice long punch list and they want to just make that list send it to you and then get an invoice that's that's the service you're providing is you're saving them time and you're keeping these properties rentable so that's where I'm at now. Um, right now I tend to do, if I had to say there was an average, I would say I average four to five jobs a day. And that doesn't mean every day is four to five jobs. Today is two jobs, one of which is an all day job and the other one 
is a five minute job in the unit right next door. So, you know, today's going to be a $625 day as far as my labor. And yeah, you need to deduct gas and other stuff from that. But when you just separate materials from labor, $625 for labor. I, I frequently do seven or $800 days, like maybe every third or fourth day is a seven or $800 day. And I have horrible days where just tenants cancel on me or I didn't schedule things properly, just stuff gets messed up. I've had, I had a day last week that was a $125 day. I just found myself in a position where it wasn't feasible for me to go do any of the jobs that would have normally been feasible on that day. I can't even remember what the details were, but I was pissed because 125 is a joke. You know, that's, I made that this morning in the first 20 minutes after I arrived here. <laughs> so your goal, your goal is to be the guy who can do everything. Now my next goal right now, there was a time when $600 days were like my dream where I was looking at what I was doing. I was going, man, I'm making three or 400 a day and that's great. But you know, I just had twins. I have identical twin boys. They're eight months old today. And I'm driving around town, you know, when they were a month or two old, just going, man, I'm doing three or 400 a day, but it's just not enough. I need to do better. So I got better. I, I got better at my scheduling. I tried to start scheduling blocks of town where I have three jobs right here and then one job that's 20 minutes away and one job five minutes away from that and then shoot home. And I've gotten to the point now where I don't have a real inventory, you know, I have a lot of leftover parts and stuff that I use frequently, but I've gotten to the point where between what I have in the truck and what I know most of these jobs are going to take, I can stop at Home Depot one time in the morning, pick up a bunch of stuff for the day, head out on the town, and I'm pulling the six to seven hundred a day. Put it this way, it's a bad day. If I don't reach six hundred, I go home kind of disappointed. I'm like, fuck man. I I should have been able to do 600 and I didn't do 600 today and that kind of sucks. So the next step for me, however, is uh, an inventory because although I do often stop at Home Depot one time, there are days, I swear to God, that I go to Home Depot six times. And every time I go to Home Depot or Ace Hardware, it's it's minimum a 10 minute drive, 10 minutes in the store and a 10 minute drive back. Or it's 15 minute drive, 15 minute drive back, and I'm in there for 30 minutes trying to get paint matched or trying to get uh, blinds cut and there's never anybody to cut any blinds. So what I really have to do is I need a real inventory. In fact, I'm in the truck right now. I don't need an inventory in this truck. I have a van coming from Mississippi that my father acquired for me and he's bringing it when he can. It's a big one-ton Chevy Express. The cargo is 12 feet long, five feet wide. I think it's like five and a half feet tall, which is about as tall as me. So what I'll be able to do, and I'm gonna need to probably take out some kind of loan, either that or just kind of buy two of everything, every job I do and slowly build it up. But the idea is if I have everything that I could possibly need to cover, let's say 90% of my jobs, you know, cause I do the same thing over and over. I go through one or two garbage disposals a week. I go through one or two uh, kitchen faucets a week. I go through two or three bathroom faucets a week. All the plumbing underneath them is basically the same. The sets of supply lines and quarter turn valves are the same. A lot of stuff is just the same. It's over and over. Maybe there's eight varieties of one particular thing, but I can buy two each of those eight things. So buy 16 things, put them in a drawer. But now every time I do this job, like say a shower cartridge, you know, your shower, your tub spout is just kind of dripping all day and it's because the cartridge is bad. I can just go buy, let's say there's, I'm going to say there's probably about eight of those, maybe 10 or 12 that are the most common. They cost anywhere from 20 to 50 bucks each. But if I can just get one of each, then when I show up at that job, when I have a leaky bathtub, I'm not going to show up with the full intent of walking in, taking everything apart, shutting off the water, pulling out the cartridge, figuring out which one it is, taking it to Home Depot, comparing it to all the ones on the shelf, buying the one that I need, coming back to the house, putting it in, 
turning the water back on and testing it out. That takes an hour. That's, that's a little bit of time to take the damn thing off. And then it's a whole lot of time to go find the one I need and a whole lot of time to come back and then a little bit of time to put it back on. So I could turn what normally is an hour, maybe hour and a half job, I can turn that every single time. Well, strike that, 90% of the time, with the exceptions of when I find the really old or really weird ones that didn't get made for very long that are discontinued. Other than that, 90% of the time, that will now be a 30 minute job instead of an hour job. So if I can do that, with say three jobs a day, that gives me an extra hour and a half in the day. Well, if I'm knocking these jobs out and 30 minutes to an hour, that gets me an extra job a day. And the better my inventory is, the faster I am. So all these little one-off, you know, changing a kitchen sink out, if I have to cut the faucet off because everything is rusted on, if I have to cut that faucet off, worst case scenario, that's a 40 minute job. If I don't have to cut it off, in fact, if I can reach up under there and I can start loosening things up with my fingers or maybe just real quick with a pair of pliers and it's not disgusting, that's a 15 minute job. And if I already have the faucet in the truck and I don't have to go to Home Depot, if I have the customer especially, I'll have the tenants send me pictures of whatever it is that I'm gonna be working on. Most of the time with the type of inventory that I want, all these jobs are gonna be 30, 40 minute jobs. And then you've got, if I schedule them correctly, where there's 10 or 15 minutes of driving between jobs, you're looking at for sure less than an hour per job. Um, and these these days right now that are six or $700 days where I am going back and forth to Home Depot and Ace Hardware, they're quickly gonna start turning into you know, $800 days day after day where I'm disappointed if I didn't hit $800. And I honestly see no reason why I can't hit a thousand because here's another thing. Let's say, uh, here's one I just did actually like two days ago. Porch light wasn't working. Tenant reports, they've already changed the bulb. Now, first of all, don't ever listen to your tenants. Um, I don't know why, but they're just not good at giving you the information that you need. So I showed up, first thing I did was I assumed that the tenant probably didn't change the bulb. So the first thing I did was I took the bulb out and I have my meter with me at all times. I have a backpack loaded up with all the most common tools that I just keep on me. So I showed up, put the meter on it, took the bulb out, put the meter in there. 240 volts. <laughs> you don't do 240 volts to, to any household light bulb ever. So right away, I know that we've got wiring wrong. So took the two little screws out, took the porch light off, went back there, the wiring's just, it's a disgusting mess, but suffice to say there are three wires coming out of the house. There's a red, a black, and a white, and two of those wires are hooked up to my light fixture. And I know, because I measured 240, that the two wires hooked up to my light fixture are two opposite phased legs of 120. And I know that that third wire has got to be the right wire. So I just disconnected one, put it on, Flip the switch real quick. The light didn't come on. Turned it back off. Took off the one I put it on and put it on the other one. Flip the switch real quick. Light came on. Boom, 120 volts. Lights on, close it back up. All in all, it was less than 15 minutes, maybe as few as 10. But here's the thing. When you have to hire an electrician, like a certified electrician to go out and work on a rental house, or a certified plumber, almost all of those guys, I'm talking about every one of them that I've ever heard of, they have a $200 minimum trip fee. And that comes just simply because they have this certification. They're certified. And that's all people care about, and they'll pay that 200 bucks. So here's what I do. Now my trip fee is 125. 125 is if I swap out a faucet or fix a leaky P-trap, you know, something simple. Uh, maybe hang a ceiling fan, you know, I'll do that for 125 But if I'm going to troubleshoot your electrical system, I'm not going to charge 200 because I don't carry the certification with me, but I'm going to charge 165 So now we've got 15 minutes for $165. So as you can see, the more jobs I get that are legit plumbing or legit electrical, things that require some troubleshooting, some sort of specialty tools, or just more knowledge than your typical, like, 
drunk with a truck and some tools that's just going to show up and try to make some money for the weekend, you can charge more for those. And eventually you start getting to the point where you start figuring out like, okay, you know, if I change a smoke detector, like one smoke detector, let's say I don't change it, I just put a 9 volt battery in it. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's five minutes. Uh, and I'm going to be nice to the companies that give me a lot of work. And for that five minutes, I'm going to charge them 100 instead of 125. I just gave them a discount, but I still made $100 in five minutes plus drive time, which if I scheduled correctly, wasn't more than 10 minutes drive time. So long story short, where this business is going to get to, and this is my way of bulletproof, where this business is going to get to is I'm going to have this van. It's going to have every tool I could possibly need for 90% of my jobs, not 100 because then you'd need uh, way more than just a van. But 90% of my jobs, I will have the tools and the inventory necessary on a daily basis. Enough of them that I won't run out even if I have repetitive jobs. You know, I'll have 30 smoke detectors back there. So even if I hit five houses with six smoke detectors each, never going to run out no matter what. This should easily get to $1,000, but the reason it's bulletproof is because I'm doing property management. And with property management, the thing is, is like I said, when you become that guy that they can rely on, when they think to themselves, uh, I really need this done, and I really need this done right, and I need it done soon, I know if I send it to Ray, Ray has never just dropped the ball. Worst case scenario, Ray has called me and said, hey, I'm really booked out, and this is a lower priority type of job. It's not something that's leaking. It's not an electrical issue. This one's going to have to wait for like three weeks. That's the worst case scenario. They will send you those jobs. And let's say there's a recession. In fact, COVID was a great example. With COVID, all of a sudden, people were allowed to stop paying rent, right? Uh, that's really bad if you've got a homeowner who's renting a property and he's not getting rent it's kind of hard for him to pay you but if you're a property management company there are just certain lines that don't get crossed if your toilet doesn't work it has to get fixed the money will come from somewhere most of these owners have some sort of small account a lot of these companies also have their own account and they'll get the money back from the owner later but with property management, that's your investment. You have to keep it rentable. If you don't keep it rentable, it won't be rented. And then you don't have any money and you've still got a mortgage and uh, property insurance and all that that you've got to pay. So my work doesn't slow down just because people stop paying rent or just because homeowners stop having money. Another thing is, I'm not doing any big fancy jobs. You know, when I started this, I really had this idea. I was going to do custom kitchens. I was going to do custom, like, workout stations with special alloy metals cemented into the backyard for people's pull-up bars. I was just going to do all this custom, you know. I put in bids for some really wealthy people in the nice part of town where it was essentially I was going to make $1,000 a day. And they were happy with that, and I did some of those small projects. But the thing is, is these people that have money, they have money because the economy is doing a certain way, or because their business is doing a certain way. But that money's not permanent, and you never know what's going to happen. But here's the thing with these rental houses, yeah, maybe I'm just replacing the fill valve on a toilet. I do five of those a week. And yeah, that's boring, it's not fancy, it's nothing to brag about. Uh, cleaning out pee traps under sinks and stuff, that's stinky, man. I go home stinking. There's nothing fancy about what I do. Uh, you don't get to brag to people about the actual work that I do. But here's what I want to brag about, is when I get this business to a point where I personally can pay myself 150 a year, maybe eventually 200 a year, where I have other people that I contract some of my work out to, just good, reliable people, like just a doorknob guy, just a toilet guy, just a this guy, just a that guy, and I can send them the work order and say, hey man, you wanna replace toilet fill valves? I know that's a thing you know how to do. They're all the same. I'll pay you $80 to do that. In fact, you don't have to do what I do with the property management companies. I will pay you $80 and I will pay for the materials the same day. And when you send me a picture that the job's completed 
and me or my secretary or whomever gets word from the homeowner that the job is in fact completed and the toilet works, I'll sell you the money right now or whatever program you want to use, whatever quick money transfer, will get you your $80 right now. So you don't have to spend any of your own money and you get paid the same day. Maybe you just got like a college kid who just wants some extra beer money every now and then. That's fine. Here's 80 bucks for doing that. But then I'm going to invoice 125 bucks. And when you deduct the time that I have to pay the secretary or whatever admin person for, maybe some different insurances that I need to take on board, I'm still out doing what I'm doing where I can charge 150 to 200,000 a year labor depending on how many days of work days a week I work. Plus I can start building up this network of other people. So I'm not going to brag uh, about changing a toilet fill valve. There's nothing fancy about it. But I am going to brag someday about how I started with nothing with just this crappy this is not crappy. I love this truck. This is 72 Chevy C20, so it's the 3 quarter ton, got the full 8 foot bed. Everywhere I go, people compliment it. I love this truck, but it's not what I should be working out of. But I've literally started with just a pickup truck, and I've got busted up plastic bins in the back, and one of them has a bunch of plumbing junk in it, one of them has a bunch of electrical junk in it. But I'm pulling $600 a day with this busted up old truck and a bunch of plastic bins, and someday this is going to be a business that I'm going to pass down to my sons and or daughter if I have any daughters in the future, which I hope I do. But anyways, so that's where we're at. That's where we're going. This is bulletproof because, uh, oh yeah, one more thing. Um, COVID, right? There came a time when they were finally allowed to start kicking people out of their properties. Six or eight months went by where people didn't have to pay rent and they couldn't get evicted. Well, the bill finally came due and people could get evicted. And I'm not happy about anyone getting evicted, but here's an upside to what I do, is even when people are getting evicted, not only is that not less work, that's more work. Because now somebody has moved out and I now have to go in and fix all the things that were broken so that they can rent it out to new people. So it just, it doesn't matter what the economy does. It doesn't matter if you have lockdowns for COVID. It really doesn't matter as long as people are renting houses those houses need to be fixed to remain rentable and guys like me need to fix it and if you can be the guy that they can just send the text message or send the email to some of them have other software systems and you just you just assign it to ray and then boom a week later there's the invoice the job is done nobody ever complains nobody ever has to go back behind me and fix my work you're now bulletproof you're now i have more work than i can ever do it rolls in daily. Every day I get three, four, five new jobs, and every day I finish three or four or five jobs, and it just keeps building up. And then I have some bigger ones like I'm on today, where just the one job is a full day, and it builds out. And when they see me getting where I'm three weeks out, when I start calling saying, hey, just so you know, uh, keep sending me all the work you want, just know I'm booked about three weeks out. So none of these people, unless it's an emergency, are going to get taken care of soon. And they'll slow it down a little and they'll speed it up when you start knocking them out quickly again. But you always, always, always will have the work. And it isn't fancy work. It's nothing to show off. But if you're like me and you've got a wife and three kids, two of which are eight month old, you know, newborn identical twins, and we want to have more. And I want to provide. I want my house to be a nice house. I want to upgrade it. I want to improve it. I want us to have reliable cars. I want my wife to feel secure. I want to take my kids to Washington, D.C. I want them to stand in front of like a big old T-Rex skeleton and just be in awe and dream about their future. I want to provide for my family the way that most people can't or most people don't because they're just in the system there, you know. I thought 25 an hour was great when I worked at, at Bombardier. I was doing avionics system on business jets for 25 an hour, and man, I was proud. I'm like, dude, I'm making 25 an hour, but I eventually figured out I can do way more, and my family deserves way more, and your family deserves way more. So there's other ways to be a handyman, and good luck to you if you're going to do some of the other ways. There's nothing wrong with them. You can do commercial. You can do residential, you can work directly for homeowners, you can work for property management companies, you can only work for the rich, 
you could be a guy who goes around town knocking on doors and you could probably make a lot of money just knocking on every single door with tools ready in a backpack and just fix their leak real quick for 40 bucks with no overhead. There's a lot you could do, but what I'm doing is what I think is bulletproof. It's what I know I can grow. It's what I know the business will always be here for. And it's what I know is going to take care of my family until the day I die or retire and hopefully some of them take it over. So if you have any questions, comments, let me know. Um, I'm excited about what I do. I'm excited about helping other people and giving them the information. I tell people all the time, if you wanna do what I do, just let me know, I'll tell you how to get your business license, what tools you need. I'll give you the rundown. I'll even set you up with the companies that I'm doing work for and say, hey, here's a new handyman you can use. I'm not gonna vouch for you, but I'll give them your info and I'll say, shoot, send this guy three or four jobs, you know, fucking see what happens, because you never know. And maybe you can do what I do at the same amount of money or maybe more money or maybe a little less. You make what you want. But that's what I do. So <clears throat> let me know what questions you have. Give me comments. Tell me what you do. I'm excited to start this channel because I'm growing right now and I'm going to get to look back on this channel and watch myself as I grow. And y'all are going to get to watch me grow. You're probably going to get to watch me make mistakes. You're probably going to get to watch me try to take a new path and then quickly figure out that's the wrong path. But that's the point. Just get up and do something. Don't sit around. Don't be satisfied with just good enough is enough because it's not. Your family deserves better and hopefully you get there. Hopefully I get there. We'll see.